Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the Just Survive live update notes for February the 21st. If you're new to the channel or a returning visitor along with those from DTube, welcome. Be sure you guys are subscribed and are following. Your support and current subscriber support is greatly appreciated. The Demolition Hammer is now the Stronghold Hammer. You can either equip the hammer or just have it on your person to access base permissions. The Stronghold Hammer will now allow you to upgrade building pieces. You'll need to have the specific materials on you while you use the E-Key to apply the upgrade, like here we've done from wood to metal. There was a reduction in cost of wood and metal construction components, along with an increase in hit points for metal pieces. An improved placement system has been implemented for base components and changes to recursive destruction. You'll now have to destroy all supports for a base component to completely collapse. The stone tier building pieces have been added. You'll notice that they use most of the standard build materials, so you'll need to do some extra gathering if you're planning on building or upgrading with stone. The team fixed the gap issue for stone, metal, and wood doors. They now form a nice seal. We now have a stronghold vault, providing players with an added strengthened room to protect your most valuable loot. The component cost of metal shacks was reduced while also having its hit points increase. Base foundation placement detection was improved. They have a little more depth to them. They're also a little easier to place and you'll be able to place them in more locations. You'll want to keep in mind that three sides of the foundations have had their ramps removed. So you'll want to be mindful of your access ramp as you place your foundation. Assault ramps can now be crafted. You can attach them to the sides of foundations with the green highlighted areas and they are a one-time placement and can't be picked up. They can't be used on the foundation itself to leap walls for those who were asking. Storage containers now drop their loot in the loot bag of death style drop rather than having individual items dropped. They can't be opened by people without permissions. They've had an increase in hit point durability and they are limited to 20 per foundation. You'll notice an increase in ammo spawns along with their new graphics. You'll also get better yields when you're breaking them down. Yeast has made its return to the crafting menu to many people's delight. You can still find yeast in the environment as loot. Weapon cleaning kits have been removed from the loot table. However, you can still craft them. Weapon repair kits can still be found as loot. Another significant change is the removal of lower tier rusty and or white tiered weapons. will now break down either green or light blue weapons for components. Green components will allow you to make blues and blues will allow you to make higher tier purple. These broken down parts are universal, so they don't have to correspond like for like for the upgrade. Lower tier body armor was also removed. You can still craft armor and find the rare Kevlar vest in the environment. Armor functionality against melee was improved, but the effectiveness was reduced from the previous equivalent. Helmets have been returned to their original damage mitigation. Pipe bomb was removed and IED was renamed to ethanol bomb. Adjustments to tier ranking of dynamite ethanol bombs and dynamite bundle was made to match explosive performance and increased bulk of dynamite and bundles. Wrenches have been removed from the environment. Vehicles now have increased capacity and players who die in cars now have their loot dropped into the car's inventory. Cars that are destroyed now drop a loot bag. Fall damage calculations have been reworked to reduce lethal falls. Players will ragdoll when taking significant fall damage. You can now sleep with the tired, very tired, or exhausted debuffs gain and well-rested buff. You'll notice an increase in stamina regeneration. All Super 8 items now regenerate stamina, just like coffee would, and now juices will help you regenerate stamina. I'm hoping juices will be added to the coffee filter recipe soon. Zombie spawns have been reduced. This also addresses the spawns when you're close to other players as well. The name zombies have had their spawns reduced. The Banshee Scream radius has been reduced and it will now drop gun parts. The Scream now has reduced damage to vehicles as well. Guys, this was one of the most massive updates we've had in a while, so I've only touched on some of the main changes. If you want to see all the details, I'll leave a link to the official notes in the published section below. You can also stop by the H1Z1DB website, a comprehensive database of game-related news and information. They also have the H1Z1 interactive map, so be sure you add them to your browser bookmarks. In the published section below, I've included a link to the February 2018 producer letter as he outlines aspects of the game we've experienced and hints at the future direction of the game. 
I do believe that 2018 will be the year we possibly see the finish line for the game, but that's just me speculating. Thank you all to my subscribers and visitors for your social media shares, retweets, and Steemit for Steemit and DTube followers. I appreciate your guys' comments, your participation on the channel, as well as my Steemit is greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, be sure you click on that channel icon appearing on your screen. To subscribe, if you're on mobile, click on that red subscribe button. To my DTube viewers and Steemit, be sure you give me a follow so you guys, all of you, We'll have the latest at a daybreak and just survive.